there's too much to explain at the moment, but let me give you a brief introduction about myself. I'm an exchange student who came from China to Vancouver. I'm 18 and I'm currently studying architecture. The city is beautiful, but running into homeless people is one of the problems in the city since they'll beg the hell out of you just for a few cents. I lived a fairly normal life and I have a good family, and had lots of friends back in China. I'm writing this in a rush because there's something that's happening in my bathroom right now. Just a couple of weeks ago, my campus had a school shooter, which means that we had to go into lockdown. That's when people in classrooms hide under the tables, and people in the washroom just sit there and pray. I was one of the guys who were stuck in the washroom by myself. The campus wasn't the cleanest, which is probably one of the reasons why not many people go there. As the lockdown began, all the lights in the facility were turned off, as well as the ones in the bathrooms. That was a red flag. It was then that I realized that I forgot my phone in the lecture room. Obviously, there's no way that I'm going outside, since I don't know if the shooter is still out there, so I just chilled there. I was there for a minute or two when I heard water dripping. Not just anywhere in the bathroom, but on the floor of the bathroom. I didn't really care, since like I said before, the facility is just bad. Not much happened for the next five or so minutes. What happened next screwed me up real good. The light outside the bathroom turned on for about five seconds. And as I stared at the bathroom stalls, the light coming from the door illuminated a pair of wet feet in the stalls. It knows I'm here, and so do I. I was too scared to scream, and I just stared at the bottom of the stall after the light turned off, and it left me frozen in the darkness. There was literally nothing I can do but just wait for the police to show up and burst out of the bathroom. As it gets more quiet and dark, I could hear the breathing of the thing inside the bathroom. I couldn't really tell you the height of the thing since the stall went all the way up to the ceiling. Just then, I heard the stall door opening. I lost it. As I was about to storm out of the bathroom, I see a pair of shoes at the door of the bathroom. It was the shooter, but it seems to be looking in the other direction, not really looking in the direction of the bathroom. I can hear the thing crawling up the walls, and heard one of the tiles on the ceiling shut. It's no longer in the bathroom, which brings me a ton of relief, but I start to wonder why it hadn't attacked me. I can hear the police sirens. It's finally over. A few minutes later, the lights in the school turned on, except for the bathroom lights. I reached for the light switch, but another hand was there. It had come from the ceiling. As I look up, I can see the silhouette of the thing staring down at me. I screamed as loud as I can, and it went back up to the ceiling, slamming the tiles. I bolted out of the bathroom and back to my lecture room. I picked up my phone and ran to the police who were still at the entrance of the facility. They did a search through the ceilings and the bathroom, but found nothing. Not even a trace or footprint, and they told me to get some rest. I stopped going to my university and had to go back to China where I am now typing this. Whatever was in that bathroom that day was definitely not human and I'm just glad that I'm with my parents. But recently, water started dripping from my bathroom in the apartment. You guys might just ask if it's just some drainage problem, but the thing is, I live on the top floor and it's not raining. I've heard so many stories about lockdowns, but not once did I expect it to happen to me. I mean, for Christ's sake, I live in the middle of nowhere. We have maybe 500 students in total in my school. It's definitely enough for everyone to know everyone's name. The last time we got a new student was two years ago, so that should give you an idea. Regardless, the story's about the lockdown. The familiar yet eerie chime of please remain in your classes until further notice rang through the building over the intercoms. It was surprisingly calm, despite it not saying that it was a drill. Then again, despite our little town, crime isn't completely unheard of. I bet it's a robber down at Chase Bank, Kyle grinned, jabbing me in the rib. Jade shoved her lab desk across the aisle, shushed him. She was in my chemistry class a hot minute ago. Her jumpiness doesn't surprise me, based on our previous reaction to our mixing experiment. Relax, no one's in the school, Kyle rolls his eyes, and yet still his voice has dropped a couple of notches in volume. His eyes turned to me. Sam, what do you think? I didn't feel much like talking. I ran a finger through the line of dust under my desk, shrugging. I don't know, probably a robber, I conceded quietly. Exactly, exactly. Kyle's voice was beginning to get louder, only interrupted by the teacher herself shushing him. Jade looked pretty smug. Kyle then. It was about 10 minutes of bated breaths, until like most high schoolers tend to, we lost all our patience. Even Jade herself was now chattering softly to whoever was sat next to her. I don't quite recall who it was. It sounded like fireworks at first, very quiet, as if someone had stamped on some of those pop rocks. We'd all seen the news enough lately to know what it was though. Even Kyle, who had been previously debating who would win in a fight, Mario or Kirby, grew silent. The teacher moved swiftly to the doorway and peered out from behind a corner. The heaviness in the air was suffocating. We heard it again, louder this time. Remember when your history teacher would slam a book on the desk of a sleeping student to startle them awake? That's exactly what it sounds like. 
a gunshot echoing through a hallway. A girl across the room, I think Tori based on the voice alone, let out a muffled sob of fear. I didn't bother looking up at Kyle. I focused my attention on the door, leaning out from under my desk to peer through the window. I focused my attention on the door, leaning out from under my desk to peer through the window. I'm not sure what I expected to see, but whatever I was expecting, a whole lot of nothing was not what I was expecting. The hallway was empty and dark, as it tends to be when no one is in it. The lights, they're all automated, you know? And then they turned on. A wave of yellow light bathed over the room that we were huddled in, casting shadows against the rows of desks. Someone, somewhere, tried to calm the crying girl, but I could hear their own murmured voice waver. More bangs, loud this time. You could practically feel the walls vibrate with the sound. It was like fireworks, but different at the same time. I don't really know how to describe them, but I can tell you about the feeling deep down in the pit of where you know that the curtains of life are closing on you, where you can really feel death's cold fingertips on your shoulder, practically begging you to dig your own grave. Your heart races, you swallow down a void of inky blackness, and a silver of ice works its way through your veins. It's as if time froze the second he walked by the window. I felt my heart beat wildly as the doorknob shifted. I curled up tightly under the desk that was meant to save my life. I don't remember if I was breathing or not. The door shook as someone banged on it repeatedly. I was surprised that the door stayed hinged. Someone screamed a warbled sound, yelled through the fan of fear. Several shots rang out, aimed through the window into the bodies of the straggling students that were visible from outside the door. There was, and there still is, a surprisingly small amount of blood surrounding the bodies. Tori, Hayden, and Mason. Three in my classroom alone. They're laying there right now. Hayden and Tori's eyes are both open, staring wide into the nothingness. Mason, I can't see from where I am. Not his face. Only his white sketchers stand red from the gaping hole in Tori's face. The girl he was only trying to comfort. We're still waiting for police to arrive. In my town, you see, the average response time is half an hour between the police dispatch and our school. I don't know if you'll come back. It's only been 10 minutes, and after all, there's only so many classrooms. There it is, I quietly said as I pulled the book of anthology horror from the horror section. I liked going to the library a lot of times, mostly because it's a way I can feel safe and away from my classmates who like to push me around, but also because of the nice librarian, Miss W. Miss W was a gentle and kind old woman that loved making small talk in the library. She would always try to engage in conversation, and would always respect someone's boundaries if they didn't want to talk. Since I was the only person who still came to the library, she loved my company. Me and Miss W would always gossip about different students or faculty members, as long as we were quiet about it, of course. However, today was different. We were discussing about what we did last weekend, until we heard the principal make an announcement over the PA. Lockdown. Code red. I repeat, lockdown. Code red. Students and faculty members, please get to a classroom. My heart skipped a beat. Code red. That was the sign that there was an armed intruder in the school, or even worse, several of them. Immediately, Miss W went to the library door and locked it with the key. With a little bit of panic in her voice, she told me to hide and pointed to hide under a table that fitted my size. I quickly ran and crouched under the table. This table was one of those in which you could only see the lower half of someone, but I didn't really care. As long as me and Miss W found somewhere to hide, I could feel relieved. About 10 minutes have passed, and I heard nothing so far, until suddenly, I heard screaming outside the library. Students were screaming left and right as I heard bones breaking, blood splattering, and people screaming for help or for mercy. But what really made my heart drop was hearing the roars. Those roars didn't sound human at all. What the hell is happening out there, I thought, as the chaos continued outside the library. I prayed to God that whatever was killing everyone outside the library didn't break in and come after me or Miss W. I was dead wrong. As soon as I finished my prayer, there was a bang sound coming from the library doors. I covered my mouth, muffling my breathing. Yet the banging continued. It became louder and louder. Until a loud slam came and the door went flying, shattering into dozens of tiny pieces in a matter of seconds. That's when I took a look at what the intruder was. Its own feet were entirely covered in shadows, and the nails were replaced with giant claws. I silenced my breathing as it walked past my table, and inspected the library. Suddenly, I noticed the feet were walking back to my current location, the table. I muffled my breathing and prayed to God that I wouldn't find out where I was, but it didn't leave. I quietly cried, begging for help in my mind. At that very moment, I heard something, a whack of a broom. I heard a voice saying, get away from her, as the whacking continued. I looked up out of the table and saw that it was Miss W. She was attacking whatever the hell that was, 
She screamed at me to run and get out and escape, and I immediately turned. Her words were vaguely in my mind. You can live, I promise you. Tears flowed down my face as I rushed out of the library and down the hallways as Miss W screams of pain and sorrow echoed within the hallways. I didn't look back. I made sure not to look back even for a split second, because if I even stopped to go see if Miss W was alright, I would be long gone at this point. A wave of yellow light bathed the, 